Praise the Lord, sisters. My name is Sister Vicki, and the lesson that we're going to have today is how to love your children. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we just thank you for another opportunity to get into your word. We pray, Lord, that your word finds good ground and that as long as we listen and believe, we pray for understanding that we may walk in your word and be fruitful. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The scripture that we're going to be going through starts in Titus, the second chapter, and it's going to be verses 1 through 4. And it reads, But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, and in patience. The aged women, likewise, that they be in behavior that becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, and to love their children. And our focus for this lesson is that they may teach the young women to love their children. Don't you think it's kind of strange that we have to teach women, young women, how to love their children? Doesn't it come automatically? Obviously, it doesn't. Because we older women are to teach the younger women how to love. And if it's in the Bible, there's a reason for it. For it. It's true, when you have these babies, they come with no instruction. But we've got a great teacher, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the greatest lover and the greatest parent ever. And so that's why we go to his word to learn of him and how to do these things because we're new creatures and we're living a new life. Let's go to 2 Timothy 3.16. And in 2 Timothy 3.16, the reason why we go to scripture, it says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That word man, it goes for women too. And we're going to get thoroughly furnished unto good works, that our life will be pleasing unto the Lord. It's obvious because of what he stated in Titus, the second chapter, verse 4, that he wants us to learn how to love like he loves. And if it was not so, he would not put it in the Bible. Love. What's love? According to scripture, this particular type of love is called, and I'm going to try and pronounce the Greek, phylactenos. And it's got filio in it. This is a fondness for one's children or maternal love for one's children. Like that motherly love, that, that natural instinct that you should have for your babies. To be a friend, have affection, personal attachment. When I read this and looked up this word love that's in verse 4 in Titus, I was surprised that this particular love was an agape, which is the purest love, the love that God has for us. So maybe there is a need for us to grow in this love and to walk. This love that's associated with God's love is agape, the highest, purest, truest love ever. And it's eternal and unconditional. 
and it's unconditional based on Romans 8. Let's go to Romans, the 8th chapter. Verse 38 and 39. This proves the unconditional. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor death nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's eternal because God is eternal. He's an eternal spirit. And God is love based on 1 John and 4. Let us go to 1 John and 4. 1 John 4, verse 7 and 8. And it reads, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Love is who he is, and love is what he does. The popular verse, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God so loved, so loved, an action word, that he gave, gave. Sounds like love is action, just like faith. Let's go to James, the second chapter. We're just gonna walk through and see what God has to say about learning how to love and walking in that love. James 2, I'm just gonna use uh, verses 14 and 17. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Verse 17, even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. So it is with love. You can tell somebody, I love you, I love you, I love you. But if there's no action going behind, I love you, I love you, is it true love? God proved his love. He showed his love. Go to Galatians 5 and 22. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Galatians 5, in verse 22, it's talking about fruit of the Spirit. Characteristics of the newborn believer, if they've got the Spirit of God. And it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. That's the very first characteristic, the very first fruit that is mentioned, love. And this love is agape. So in order to have that perfect, eternal agape love like God, you must have his Spirit. It says fruit of the Spirit. You must have his spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. To have and exhibit that unconditional love like our Father, we must have his spirit. Like I said, without it, you come short of exhibiting it or having that perfect love. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is the love chapter. And what I want you to do is take the time after this lesson and go through that chapter and get you a good dictionary and look up the words so you can really understand 
what they're talking about. So I'm going to start in verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 4. Charity suffereth long. What suffereth long? Be patient. Not lose heart. Patiently endure. In other words, hanging in there for the long haul. Example. How many times have you asked the Lord to be patient with you? you? And then you'll notice also, too, that in this chapter, charity is used in place of love. But when you look up charity, charity is that agape love. Kind. It says charity suffers long and is kind. Doesn't hurt to be nice. Just be nice. But it also says show oneself mild. I'm not going to go through all these, but I want to skip down to verse 7. Charity beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but where there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. I'm going to verse 13 now. And now abideth faith, hope, charity. These three. But the greatest of these is charity. Love. You can have all the gifts you want. But if you don't have love, it doesn't mean a thing. Love is the greatest of all these things. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go through some more verses to see what God says about loving your children. I want you to go back to Old Testament, Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. We're going to start in verse 4. And you know this, you know this is a very popular one in um, our church. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Teach your babies about Jesus. That's what a loving mother does. Because that's where it all starts. The love, true love, long-lasting eternal love, it starts in Jesus. But if you don't know him for yourself, how can you teach them? Now, what you can do, all of you, pack up your babies and every last one of you go to church and learn together. And then as you learn, they'll learn. And what they don't understand, you can teach them. What you don't understand, you can ask somebody. Don't be afraid to ask. And be teachable. Because you don't know everything. And you want to know more about Jesus so that you can train your kids up. Teach your babies about the love of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Proverbs, the 22nd chapter. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Proverbs 22, verse 6. What does it say? You know, we've heard this one. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart far from it. Let's go to Matthew. We're talking about taking your babies to church. A loving mother wants them to learn about the true lover. Matthew 19, 14. But Jesus said, suffer little children 
and forbid them not to come unto me. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. Let's go to Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54, 13. Isaiah 54, 13. And if you miss these, I'm sure you'll be able to do a replay and get these scriptures. Isaiah 54, verse 13. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. You learn about the Lord, you're going to have peace. After your children are born, the first environment, of course, is being in the womb. The second environment is the home that you bring them to. This is the first environment that your child is exposed to. Along the spiritual aspect, there is a natural aspect in training up your child in the way they should go. This home should have basic needs provided for sustaining of life. If there is a lack in basic natural needs, ask for help. It's available. Put down your pride. There's a lot going on in the world. A lot of people have lost jobs, income, but there's help. And if you need help, you need to ask because you need to take care of your babies. We have not because we ask not. There's no room for pride or being embarrassed. That's what love does. Love provides. Love also disciplines. If you allow that anything goes at your house, when they become school age, they're going to think it's the same thing at school because they don't know any better because you didn't teach them. Proverbs 29, 15, and 17. Before we go to that verse, so if you're not teaching them, if you're not disciplining them at home, then when they go to school, what do you think they're going to act like? And then you're going to get mad because the teachers are constantly calling you about little Johnny or little Susie or whoever. That was just a name that I could think of at the time. Because I can't pronounce some of these names that you mothers have for your children nowadays. Praise God. Proverbs 29, 15. The rod and reproof give wisdom. But a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Now the Bible is saying that. Alright? God's telling you about what you need to do. About keeping your children in check. Let's go to verse 17. Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest, and he shall give the light unto thy soul. Just take a walk through the prisons today. And maybe, just maybe, if these young men or these young women have had a loving, nurturing mother, and maybe they did, we don't know. But some of them, probably, if they had been disciplined, had been shown the way, the right way, maybe they would have made better choices. And that's enough of that. But that all goes back to train up a child in the way that they should go. It's not only spiritual, but it can be natural. But it's the Bible way. You can't expect your children to learn how to conduct themselves in society if you don't teach them. If you don't know, ask. And there's 66 books in the Bible that can help you. That is the whole purpose of these teachings. To learn what you don't know and to have a platform and an opportunity to learn and to be better, to be better mothers, to be better nurturers, and so on. Teach them all that they need 
to know. Show them how to clean up their room. Pick up after themselves. Personal hygiene. Making them ready to get out on their own. And being a loving mother doesn't mean it stops after they move because once a mother, always a mother. And they're always gonna be asking you, asking you for help, asking you for guidance. And you're gonna be there for them because that's what mothers do. Inside the home, make it so that they can't wait to come home. Don't make the home in such, such an atmosphere where they dread coming home. Because if they dread coming home, they may not come home. And then they'll find um, love and, and partnerships or whatever in the streets. And it's the wrong kind. That home should be warm and loving and inviting. Make it so that they just can't wait to get home. There's too many homeless youth out there. There's sex trafficking going on for children who are just running the streets. Don't let your babies be like that. Stop hollering so much and listen to them. Let them see that what's important to them is important to you. If you have more than one child, each one deserves some of your time. And that's what happens when you're a mother, a parent, you're on the back burner. And those children, they get all the attention. And it's all about them and it's not about you. But if you have more than one, if you can just give them five minutes, you would not believe how important those five minutes are to these kids. It means a lot. Or have a, make a calendar date for each one. And then hold true to it. When you make a promise, hold to it. Allow them to trust you. The home with a loving mother is a safe home. It's not dangerous. Maybe noisy at times, but there's still peace, there's joy, and much love. Make it so your relationship with your children, they can come and tell you anything and everything. You be their counselor. Let them get it from you, especially if you're learning to get it from God. You don't want them going to the streets or going to a stranger trying to get information that should be coming from the home. Let them believe there's no place like home. And young single mothers, be careful. Be careful who you allow in your house. The devil can come with some Nikes, polo shirts, smelling good, white teeth, but full of lies. Be careful who you have around your children. Love protects their own. You look in the mirror and ask yourself, would you want to be brought up by you? I'm gonna leave you with Psalm 127 and three. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his, is his reward. It was on purpose that he allowed those children to be born to you. They are a gift. Life is a gift. The whole growth of a baby within the womb it's a gift, and it's a marvelous thing. I pray in Jesus' name to learn all that you can about the love of Jesus, how much he loves, how he loves, how wide, how high, how deep he loves. And I pray that you learn to love him, to, love, to learn to love your children just like he loves you. 
I pray that you be blessed. I pray that you've learned at least one or two things. And I pray in Jesus' name that you'll learn how to love your babies. Amen and God bless.